I guess, I guess we're going to start. I guess we're a little excited. Don't you? <laughs> Don't you love that movie? I love a movie that makes me laugh and cry and feel. And, we're, and obviously, we have someone here, Kristen Stewart. And I'm going to guess you know her credits and you just want to hear her talk, so we're just going to say Panic Room, Twilight, da-da-da, da-da-da. <laughs> and this, which, and this movie, which is so unique among the Oscar movies this year, this, and so unique among biopics, and so unique in how it treats Diana. And I wanted to start at the end, because we all are still sitting in that end, right? Of the jolly music, the car, the mummy, the drive through So can you talk about... Oh, the mummy? And then oh, I, yeah. oh, the yummy. I, I, the okay. yummy, I call her... She's, I always call Diane... I have to find so many ways to use, say mother, so I call her a yummy mummy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay. Let's take from that. Um, yeah, you got to take that in. I really enjoy that. Thank you for giving that to me. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, yeah, well, we were just, um, at the, you know, when you do Q&As, always come in and see. I've seen the end of this movie now, like, a thousand times, so I've only seen the whole thing a couple times, and um, I always am like, oh, it's, God, it's so, it's so lovely. That's, like, such a nice feeling, but look, and for anyone who's, like, heard me say all this shit before, I apologize, but <laughs> um, Pablo said something kind of later in our press tour, uh, and it's really hard to find new words for these feelings because our feelings haven't changed. Do you know what I mean? It's like you have to kind of find new ways of describing how it, how it felt to hold her. And he was like, I felt like we were doing a ghost story. And I was like, yeah, of course. Anne Boleyn kind of folds in and the, the, whole, the whole movie does feel like a dream and it kind of feels like uh, every century that came before her is kind of like, you know, bearing down on her. And in that way, it feels ghostly. And he was like, no, you were a ghost the whole time because we just know all of the loss and every moment of levity. Like every time she's winning <clears throat> and you're like celebrating with her you go like fuck <sighs> yeah yeah um so i love the end of the movie because she ultimately did you know she left and like had some time like like a, you know a significant amount of time to sort of speak for herself and whatever but um but that scene there is there there's that feeling of after being stuck for so long in, in the castle, and then getting out and being on the road again, and, and the music, and her connection to the boys, and then, then I just feel it in, like in my back, like this thing of this knowing that we know what's gonna happen, and that I hope she had a lot of moments like that that were joyous. I mean, it's definitely clear that when she was with those guys, um, <clears throat> that's like, you know, that's what you're protecting. That's, you know, I, I don't know, Obviously, it's silly to sort of do like elaborate hypotheticals in which reality is just a different thing. But um, if she didn't, if she wasn't a born mother in the way that she was, if she didn't have that one thing to kind of bolster her, I, you know, I, who knows what would have happened? Like, who knows if she would have been able to get out? I think she was there was she was fighting tooth and nail for something very specific, and it was then. And I think that's central. I think what? How would you describe her as a mother? Where did she get? Is it just like a natural? Where did you come into that idea of her as a mother? I mean, I know she's a mother. Where did you, how did you channel that part of her that's a mother? <laughs> did someone answer? <laughs> uh, it, just, it just is. It's funny, like, um, it, me and Pablo talk about this all the time. You, you get asked questions. And Pablo is Lorraine. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pablo is Lorraine. <laughs> the director, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, uh, he is always like, I don't know, I, I think of, I say these things because they ask me these questions, but I, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, it's so evident in who she is. It is, it is the, str it is the strongest part of her. It's the most unconditional aspect of her personality. I feel like she's so, she's really, uh, it's not just like the vulnerability and the delicacy and all of that because she's like fragile and sad and isolated and she can't speak for herself. And if you're, <laughs> what? <What's that? laughs> 
Um, yeah, all that shit. All that stuff. Um, but All that stuff that's in other movies. <laughs> yeah. But it's so, if you can't speak for yourself, if you, you know, not everyone, like as an artist, you can't have secrets. You, the whole thing is that if you're not trying to put something out, if you're not trying to externalize your inner life and share it with other people, then you're lying and it's bad art. Some people, I just wonder what she would have wanted to do with her life. I, I think that she's a really talented person. I think she's like kind of a genius person and, and it doesn't mean that she makes stuff, but she does connect with people in a way that was like, I, you know, I never met her, but I, I saw it. The ripple effect is gargantuan. It's, it's crazy and, and that I think, I have, I think, whatever was going on inside of her must have been so rich. Like that terrain must have been so, you know, it was just screaming to get out for a reason. And if you stifle that, um, that's just the most violent thing you can do to someone. Uh, and she didn't know who she was. And then she had those boys and she did. And like, I can't imagine being in a position of like trying to figure out how I want to talk and what words I want to, choose for things and things that I care about whenever and be that age and be told to perpetuate a lie consistently and to do it with a smile on your face and then to be asked to also try and convey and be real. It's like, what is real? I don't even exist. I've not been allowed to. So I think the boys, it's very clear when they entered her life that suddenly it was like, there was one thing that was an undeniable, I don't know. If, if any of that, right. yeah. and that leads, and that leads to discussion. I love the scenes. I love this movie scene by scene, and I did a lot this year of looking at mothers in all these various movies. And I love the scene, you know, in the Last Daughter, in, um, the, the, anyway, in the Will Smith. It's movie. scary up here. Huh? It's, no, it's hard to think of I the things. I just am like, what? <laughs> I, know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what were the moves? So what's interesting about this was when I brought, when I started thinking about this in terms of her as a mother, and I started looking at those scenes again of all the troubled mothers, of all the modern mothers who are whole, you know, want to be something and can't do it, like the last daughter that leave their kids. Um, in this case, when they, the scenes when they're in the bedroom, her and her sons, there's such an honesty between them. And that's what defines her for me. Did, is that, did you see that when you, when you were doing those scenes? Do you see those as key scenes and what, they were, what you're building in that scene? Um, yeah, I think like really intentionally, tonally speaking, we, we shot that scene on like any other scene we shot in the movie. Um, it was largely improvised and we had like kind of, we knew like where we wanted to land, but our path to get there was totally up hmm. to us and totally up to the boys to kind of like play this game. But what they did is because they're from England and they know all about the royal family, they like started saying things that were so on point and so contextualized and like full of story. And it was shocking to me. And, and I bet that those little kids occasionally said things that shocked her. And, you know, such self-referential, such self-aware things, like, do you want to be the king? I have no choice. I was like, do you want to write scripts? Or like, what's up? <laughs> like, what, what are you, oh my God. <laughs> do you want to move to Santa Barbara? Montecito, <laughs> yeah. possibly? Uh -huh. um, yeah. And I, I just, I feel, there's something that, you, that, that you've said or that's, that, that you've said about people who can work with young actors, since you started with Jodie Foster and you were young, that there's a connection. When you were talking to Nicole Kidman about this, about because she was supposed to be the lead in Panic Room and then wasn't, that, that what is it for an, question, what is it for an actor, question, what is it like for an actor to interact with these children and to be, to live in the moment with them? It's really fun. <clears throat> it's um, it's so it's so rare to to everyone's process is different, and um, it's really really beautiful when you find an adult actor that I don't know th the drives are the same and 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 the path is the same. 
And I always kind of have like one foot in and one foot out. I'm never like, I lost myself completely. I didn't even know we were making a movie. I'm always making a movie. Okay. Like that's, yeah. And that's, like, yeah. And yeah, but I'm always like kind of from the inside trying to like help the director do the best thing. And um, yeah, I, I think that um, kids can't mm -hmm. hide and I'm getting there. Okay, good. I thought that you might've gone off. <laughs> no, no, I, no, 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 no. You no, don't no. need my help. Um, <laughs> no, I remember the question. I'm getting right <laughs> back to it. Um, so little kids, <clears throat> I still, like my, my, pr my process even though it's like very concerted and I, and I technically am technical, um, something happens when somebody uh, understands that you both have one foot in and one foot out and you start to become and you start to actually be and you do it with an awareness and a sort of mission statement thing that you're sharing but at the same time suddenly you start to be together in a way that is just so real. And it's like these, I have moments like that that comprise the memories of my life. They're personal, they are not movies to me. Like they feel like they're my memories. And um, it's so easy to do that with the little guys. And it's, it's a really stunning exchange. It's so, it feels so good. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're like prescribing a story or telling someone how to feel. It's like we all get to share something. And uh, I don't know, I think not everyone is open to that. It's so rare, like I, and, and you know, everyone has a different way and that's totally fine. Sometimes like it doesn't even yield good results, but the feeling is good, you know? Right. But um, uh, yeah, there are certain actors. Sally Hawkins is one of them. There's just something where you're like, are you a magic person? Are you like a weird fairy <laughs> magician from outer space? I love you. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> yeah. And if you <clears throat> haven't seen Maudie with Sally Hawkins, it's like one of the best little scene films. I've never seen that. You've never seen her with, with her, where she plays the, she plays um, a painter. What do you call it? A nat, not a naturalist, like a, people who are untrained. An untrained painter in Nova Scotia. And um, an other artist. I think you'd call it an other, like other artist. And uh, um, Ethan Hawke is in it. And it's just this really lovely, lovely, lovely biopic. And she's fantastic. So I'm sure you can see it somewhere. And I'm always selling Sally Hawkins. She's, she's, she is spectacular. I am I'm amazed by that person. So what would you say when you say that? So what is your process? That's like such a big thing. <laughs> like, oh, I have to find an answer for this now. Now, I answer the question. Yeah. Oh, damn that. Let's, <laughs> that's not, we don't need to go in that direction. If that's <laughs> no, like, I'm you kidding. know, that's kind of the thing. That's like, yeah, I'm saying. I was just putting my hair You're in my pocket. <laughs> okay, she's doing this to screw with me because I came here once with Jason Momoa and I could not keep him on stage and he jumped out and he sat in some lady's lap. <laughs> and now, now that gives her a lot she has to talk. <laughs> Don't worry, JB. <laughs> You're not going there. What, um... I like to talk about these scenes. So what, yeah, what you know, I love the scene, and we've seen so many now with the crown and the queen and the, you know, so many English royalty movies, shows, and yet this, the dinner party scene, well, not the dinner party, is that a dinner party? That Christmas dinner when the, when the queen is just sitting there in judgment. Yeah. And it's, it's so mortifying that it feels like every bad meet the parents dinner, you know, the, that, there's, that, there's something that's so universal to that scene. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also <laughs> Oof, it's, I don't want to go back there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, that, they don't eat dinner like that. Do you know what I mean? Like that, Sandringham, Sandringham doesn't even look anything like the castle that we depict in the movie. There's a sort of like austerity and coldness and truly like frigid, like expansive consuming thing that happens in our movie. And I'm, I've seen pictures, it doesn't look like that. It, she's, he, the way that Pablo did this movie and I thought it was like, the first thing he told me on the phone when he was like presenting this as, as a concept, he was like, I, I, I need to make everyone not care about what happened um, or what it looks like. It needs to be what it, what it might have felt like. And might is the operative word because it, this is something, this is so personal to us, this is ours. We, we could never know her. So when we were doing that scene, 
I knew that we were kind of like pushing surreality and kind of like taking a step inside of somebody versus trying to like dictate or educate anyone or like find new details for whatever. But like, or just cover every base. Like we don't need to cover first, second, third and like slam home to the tragic end. It's like we, everyone's bringing that whole story to the movie already. And so all of this is like all well and good to say, but when we shot that scene all day long and he put Anne Boleyn at the table and we started actually like really just shoveling these pearls, like I, I, I couldn't believe that he was like serious and that he really was like true to his original take on this, that to pay credence to inner life and it's just such an unbelievably beautiful, compassionate act for like a man to say like, I'm gonna shoot this scene in the most elaborate, I'm gonna aggrandize your feelings to the top of the world. We're not gonna like have you go cry in a corner. It's like, let's, let's do something that looks like how it feels like to live versus what it, what it looks like on the surface. And I think it's just such a cool thing for a, a guy to do that. Because women are always like, I don't know, she's a petulant, in a as a character in our thing, there's a certain thing about her that's like beautiful, but she's a frustrating person as well. Do you know what I mean? And, and in reality and in our story and blah, blah. But like, I just think it's such a beautiful act of kindness, that scene. Because it's like, no, that hurt, it was horrible. It didn't look like that, but it fucking felt like that. And it's really nice to visualize those things. Yeah. And yeah. also you just, you, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, also, it just seems like it's not the queen and Diana, it's anyone, anyone who has an eating disorder or is somewhat sensitive sitting at that table and being judged and there's no way they can win in that in that judging yeah it's it's like you know obviously like i just said like these are her projections who knows how everyone actually felt you know i think that there was a lot of concern for her how to deal with it nobody knew it was a different time mental health was dealt with in such a different way the sweeping under the rug the stiff upper lip all of that is like you know Large, largely due to her, like something that we don't put up with anymore, to do things you hate. It's like, no. Um, but uh, but yeah, of course, Jesus Christ, sitting at the table with your fucking partner's mom being like, I would, I <laughs> it's horrible. Um, but yeah, the eating disorder thing, she was trying to disappear. I think one thing that really like hit me and stuck, and I think about it all the time, um, and it's like hugely covered in like the crown and it's it's one of the more kind of um, it's one of her quotes that that what you hear a lot mm -hmm. and she like looked at her husband I think they were in Australia she was like at Ayers Rock and she hadn't eaten in like days or maybe she had just like really purged hugely I don't mean to put this like I'm not you know, look like, it's hard to speak candidly about this kind of stuff because I have nothing to do with it Right. But fully respectfully, she was like, um, she like slid down the side of him and went, darling, I think I'm gonna disappear. And it's like, it, 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 you know, the shame spiral and the sort of control and relief and then just the idea that you don't deserve that and then you can diminish. I think it's crazy that that was actually her problem because it seems written. It seems so narratively right. servicing our story. Do you know what I mean? It's, but you know, uh, yeah. I guess it's just an oddly well-rounded story in our history. And you know, I'm very happy that she actually got to a point where she stopped doing that to herself because she did, and she's really she was very vocal about um, wanting to help other people stop coping in that way. There are other ways to cope, you know. Yeah. How how much research did you do? None. I just kind of sort of wung it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dyed my hair and I just kind of got Wore there. Wore a wig. Wore a wig. Yeah, didn't even dye it. <laughs> Put on that dress with the tule and the bottom. <laughs> the mermaid dress. Uh, no, I read all the stuff and watched all the things. And but then <laughs> everything. But that's the. I mean, that's the his, doing doing historical 
like the crown tries to be accurate, accurate, but there's a lot of room. What I love about this movie is that it tries to give you a feeling for her without getting stuck in the facts. What did, um, uh, Pablo said something to me, he said, what did he say? He said about it being, it's not supposed to be factual, but it's supposed to be true. Mm. And that seems to me to be what works in this. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, when we were going through all of the stuff, I was really impressed with the script because nothing is wrong in it, even though it's all completely fictional. I couldn't find anything that was egregiously wrong, other than there was one scene that Sally and Diana want to, like, go outside and have a cigarette, and she ate, would she just, like, abhorred she could not handle cigarette, like any smoke of any kind. And so I was like, it's a really beautiful scene. It's a nice moment, but we have to take that, but that part has to come out. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think people like to know stuff. It's very comforting. It's nice to find the right word for something. It's nice to know exactly what happened. So especially if it's a painful memory or um, you know, something that's just hard to stomach. It's like you need to figure it out. And um, I think the reason we're telling the story over and over is because there are just like gaping holes in this story. And also just, and I don't even mean detail. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's, there's something she was never able to express and it just makes us lean in continuously. And, you know, I think as soon as you fully define something, I read this somewhere. <laughs> It's dead. Like the conversation is dead. If you can, if you, you know, if you can put it in the dictionary, it's like okay, great. Well, we don't have to talk about it anymore. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it and makes it's locked in. Yeah, and and like um, she really helps people. I think that like I think the reason this movie is um, nice, and I was glad to do it, and I got so much from it. I I just hate that movies are. Nowadays, like the biggest question I get is like, well, what did you learn from this experience and what would you like people to take away from it? Whatever the fuck you want. I don't care what you take away from it. I, I don't wanna teach anyone any lessons. I, I hate this weird moral dogmatic thing that is happening lately in art and especially in film. It's like, I don't know, I, I yeah. <laughs> um, wow, I really came here to talk. <laughs> No, I think that that's, that's so important. Yeah. No, no hugs are learning sometimes. That's what I understand. No <laughs> hugs or learning. Like, right. you don't come out of it with a fortune cookie. Like, this right. is what it's about. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, it's, but I understand why people want that because I, I crave that too, to know stuff is comforting, but it's just, uh, it's not like why I want to make movies and um, especially like women this thing where girls are telling stories where everyone has to treat each other really well and we face adversity and somehow overcome and there's always a lesson and no matter what, and like, you know, you can't judge her, but she never does anything worth judging anyway because she's just a very good person. It's like, Jesus Christ, that is not who we are. We're stuck in an odd moment though. We're right about to shift. It's, it's about we're to just, a, we're right there. It's that likability thing. It's that, you know, that, that's changing. Yeah. And we're getting female characters that aren't killing Eve, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that we can, yeah. list, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, but like we were used as a, we had to use ourselves as these like blunt instruments to make like some kind of little, just to kick the change a little bit. But now we're allowed to start telling stories. Like we can start making ones that are not, you know, prescribing some kind of medicine. I don't want to hide the vegetables. I want to like, you know. We got to eat them too. Just eat them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how does this, how does that um, flow into the movie that you're making and into the into directing and having this moment? Because you're talking about change, and I know, as a journalist, we've been we you know women journalists have been screaming for decades, and then the past decade really hard saying women need to be behind the camera, and now it's happening and it's changing the kind of movies that are being made. Mm. So so. Isn't that cool? I, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled. Yeah, and the movies are better. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't like know if I'm allowed to say this. Okay. 
<laughs> Whoa. Well, it's just you and me and the live stream and, <laughs> I don't know, 450 people, yeah. maybe more? Um, it's really not that interesting. It, it's, it's just that the next project that I'm going to do, I, uh, I'm, I really hope I'm not, like, blowing someone else's load, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm about to work with a young filmmaker, Rose Glass, that is literally, I think, somebody who is, like, I, I, I think she's such a, such a singular visionary artist and such a little mousy, crazy psycho has so much to say is gonna absolutely change like stuff for us. And I'm so excited to even just know her, but she's a good example. Like there are, there are a couple, there, there's some stuff happening that's like, you know, a little bit of, a little bit more nuance, a little bit, a little bit more, um, you know, it doesn't have to be confrontational either. It's, I don't mean like it has to be like intense and crazy, but just like something that feels a little more true and a little bit less prescriptive. And that's the direction you're going. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, oh, very passionate tonight. Yes, you are very passionate. I'm sorry. I just need to go to bed. You just need to go to bed. But you're doing really good. We're, we're fine. I know, but you've been talking. I mean, you've been talking this movie through and through and through and through. So it's a little, it's a challenge to come up, I think, with. But, but, but let's talk about this woman. Let's talk again about what scenes, what were you afraid, what scenes were you afraid to play? What scenes did you find in the, in the, in the middle of them you were suddenly alive? Mm. Uh, I mean, we shot the montage at the end of every day. Um, and that's the dancing? Or yeah, there's, just, there's like mm -hmm. a, yeah, I mean, Luckily, you guys did just see the movie, so it's not embarrassing for me to be like, yeah, you know, he must remember the montage. You just saw it. <laughs> um, but um, uh, that was like, a, that was like a, at the end of every day, like a kind of processing meditation, unpacking, um, uh, kind of purge, to be honest. And um, it's, a, it's such a cool way in. That's, uh, you talk about process. I've never done anything like that. And um, in the script, it said, like, it kind of had this feeling that her life flashed before her eyes. And I was like, how are we going to do that? I, I just couldn't, vis I couldn't visualize it. I didn't know what he was going to do with it. And I didn't know how I was going to shove myself into it. And um, basically, Pablo, on the first day, he was like, this is how we're going to do the montage. And, he, at this point, like, didn't even know where he was going to put it in the movie. And ultimately, I don't know where, where else it could have possibly gone. That, it's like the only place for it. But um, uh, he like, would play a different song and, and choose a different outfit for a different location, uh, like a different environment, and just told me to inhabit the space. OK. And I was like, I'm going to need a little bit more from you. <laughs> like, um, so did he? Did he give you a little more sense? No. No. <laughs> I was so um, scared and like, like so I wanted to do a good job. I was like, dude, if you give me a little bit more, I can really hook you up. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, so, but ultimately it was really, it was really nice because that was me kind of being fearful and protecting myself because it doesn't matter what he could have told me. He just basically, it was like, just hold her life, everything you've learned about her, everything, just take this day, whatever you're, whatever you're feeling. She's like in you, you kind of just have to like, I don't know, have a weird little dreamy lyrical moment, listen to the song and move around and stop being a pussy. And that was, and that was the note <laughs> yeah. you needed. He didn't say any of that, but I'm telling you, he <laughs> told me with his eyes, like, I was like, okay. Uh. Um, but that felt so good. It was like such a nice way to, um, you know, it, it was like an emotional, uh, um, like Heimlich maneuver. It was like something was like stuck and it was, he really was like, <clears throat> you know, get it out. And it, it did feel that way. It was a great, and also every single night was totally different. I was just watching the end of it in this little back room. And um, all the times that I'm like dancing in the closet and it's like fun, that's definitely towards the end of the movie because I was very comfortable at that point. <laughs> and everything in the beginning of like kind of smaller moving through the space, like, like the more frustrated kind of bracing stuff was like obviously when I didn't know how to do that yet. And like, um, 
this one time Pablo walked down the stairs because I was like, what do you, I don't, I don't know. I'm so, this, I don't, it was the second, to, it was the second day of shooting. It was like the first time we did the montage thing. And he was like, he walked down the stairs like this and he was like, own it. You're a fucking princess. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I don't, <laughs> you do that so well. I was like, you should just put the dress on. <laughs> the dress on. Yeah. That was a. Um, that was one of the coolest parts of making the movie was that thing. You were talking before about ghosts, and it seems like did you feel like do you feel like you channel characters? Do, do they come to you? Period. <laughs> Question mark. Do you feel, did did you channel her? Did you channel other characters, or is it in the script and you find your way there? Um, I don't think there's any real way to answer that like definitively I think it's kind of a it's like semantics it's like I could choose so many words to try and fill that but like I don't I don't know I, I think like um I, I don't think anyone can be anyone they're not and I think that other people inspire us and there's a multiplicity some people kickstart multiplicity in terms of like inspiration and I think that she makes people feel closer to themselves and I think that the reason that she was like so incredible and like changed the world. Um, she was just the first person to like reach out and touch and touch. And uh, I think it was really trippy for people to see themselves in this, in this person and, and feel reflected and feel visible and like accompanied and not alone. And I feel that from her, but I'm me. Like that's, do you know what I mean? There's, right. I could never be anything other than that. And like, I tried to do a good impression of her. <laughs> like I tried to get the accent right. My voice is different. I'm, I am a different animal. Like it just is, you know. Um, but yeah, and every character I've ever played, there's always, there's crossover for sure. But I think um, I've yet to play somebody that I can't understand. Like I've never played somebody like a, you know, it'd be fun to play a bad guy, I guess, but I, I'm just not really much of a performer. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I would be, like, great at doing something just for, like, because it was fun and there's a sort of entertainment value to it. Um, if, yeah, if I can't, and look, this is kind of, like, to a fault. If I can't understand or justify or rationalize, like, behavior, even if it's a bad one, and I don't need all of the ladies in films to be spick and span, in fact, the opposite, but, like, there right. are things that happen that you can understand, and then there are things that you're like, I can't get there. Right. I can't play those parts. There have been parts that I have like turned down or like directors that have been like, what are you doing? This is so cool. Like, what, what? I've like definitely like burned a bridge or two and been like, it's not, it's beautiful. It's not for me. It's not, it's not me. I don't want to be something else. I don't want to hide behind stuff. I want to like somehow crack into new parts of who I actually am. And this seems, it seems like this hit a spiritual note for you, right? I mean, that, that, that you found things in her that match things that were in you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, probably that could give up pretty much, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. That would make sense. And now we're going to, we have, we have uh, oh my goodness. We have questions from you, which... Um, Who's right. it gonna be? Are you ready? Did everyone submit? No, but who did? <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, okay so we're probably gonna answer all of your questions. Me. There's like four of you, and this is great. <laughs> okay, here's a, okay. And these have been vetted, so I'm just reading them. At the beach, Diana asks Maggie how she will be remembered a thousand years from now. What's the one word you would use to describe Diana's legacy? Mm. Hmm. Oh God, <laughs> one word? Okay, I'm gonna give you three. I'm gonna give you a couple. Uh, no, I mean, that's the whole game. Um, okay. Um, oh man. It, it's so lame, but I, it's freedom. I mean, it's that, it, it, she, this is a prison break movie. I think uh, like- That is such a great The Liberator, ah, oh, Diana <laughs> the Liberator. Yeah. Um. It's a prison break movie. I never thought of it that way, but boy, nails it. Onward. 
Yeah, please, swiftly ahead. Yeah. Swiftly ahead. <laughs> what is something you and Diana have in common, and did this help you play her in the film? And this is from Jackie and Aruna, we love you. <laughs> Jackie and Aruna. <laughs> um, uh, wait, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what is something, and I think we talked about this, what is something you and Diana have in common, and did that help you play her in the film? Yeah, of course, I don't know. I mean, yeah. It's funny because we were just talking about that. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah. So maybe I didn't have to read the question, but I think that you could. No, but let me see. Let's see. Um, I really like games. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. No, no, I got it. I got it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, I don't know. I think actually, to be honest, tonally we are like so different. I was very scared of playing this part because like I. Um, I don't know. I like. I'm like not like her at all. I know. <laughs> like. Um, I. I. I really admire how nice she is. I, I am. I try to be really nice too. It's more just <laughs> that was. I was trying to find an overlap. I'm really nice. So, <laughs> Kindness. Kindness. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the way that she can wield it, which is so cool. Because like, of course, I have like all of the best intentions, but like. She's so good at coming across. Like she's just, she's so casual. Like the most casual person puts you at ease immediately if she walked it. Like literally, I, I don't think I do that for people. <laughs> I think it's definitely like right. A, yeah, but that's a different. That's a different thing. It's a different thing. So that's they're very a different. It was. Vi it's very impressive that I played her. Let me tell you. <laughs> like, just, I'm just trying to frame this to be the most. Just for people to be the most impressed. With. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's that's it. That's it. Um. Some. What? It, was there something? What'd you say? There was a scream. I don't know. Oh, They're I, impressed. I know, I know. That was, that was also, see, the that thing is, if Diana told that joke, would have landed, nobody would have misunderstood it. <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, what's your favorite scene? Uh, um, uh, gosh, I honestly don't know. I, um, Okay, close your eyes and think of just a scene. You're like, say something, dude. Speak. <laughs> um, dude, speak. I, uh, well, no, I mean, shit. I, 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 I really, really love the scene between me and Tim in the kitchen, in the, in the refrigerator. I just think it kind of does the whole thing. It, it, it's the whole movie. Um, it's not the whole thing, but it, it, it is, she's so articulate and it was so satisfying to finally talk. And it was like, you know, ironic that it was like down in the dungeonous weird kitchen basement, but like, and it was obviously like not for anyone but somebody who would always twist her words and lie or not relay this to anyone else. But like, it was so satisfying to be like, he's always trying to school her and say like, you know, he talks about the oath. He talks about like, if you could just come to dinner on time. Like, it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm learning these lessons the hard way right now. Right. In real time. And I know them better than you will ever know them. And like, to just say that, to just, to be like, and I love how it's written. I just think it's so weird. And how cool would it be if she actually spoke like that? Like, she probably didn't. But like, how cool if she actually one day was like, they're pulling my legs and my wings off. Like, I'm just like, wow, that is a very cool way to express that idea. <laughs> and I hear you. And it felt really nice to not be like, not saying something. And but to he be comes empowered in, a, in the moment to say the thing, not like five minutes later thinking. Yes. Yeah. Very satisfecho, even though he walks out and she's like, you know. Uh. Also, at the end of that scene, um, Pablo didn't cut anything out of this movie. Like, we, it took us, it was like such a condensed schedule. Everything's in the movie. Um, we didn't overshoot anything, but there's one thing that was like taken out of the end of that scene that destroys me, and I think it was a mistake. But, um, <laughs> um, and also, I will say, he's an uncompromising fellow. 
Um, and so I, I, I trust him no matter, like, no matter what. But this one, I actually think that it was a stu like a studio note. And he was like, Chris and I have to give to them things so I can have my movie. And I was like, I know, baby, I know. <laughs> um, but like, so what did he give up? There was, I, ate, I like ate my wedding ring at the end of that scene. Ooh. And it was just like, it's, he literally cuts right before, I'm like eating this cake and the next thing that happens is it's in and down and gone and, and then it like kind of shows up in the next scene and so you want, it's, it's almost the kind of, maybe it's a double beat, like maybe it's just another Pearl moment, but like there was just something about coming off the tail end of that power, like the tail end of that articulation and being like, see ya. And it just, I loved it. Um, but I think it went, I don't know, it pushed people, it, it rubbed people the wrong way for some reason. No, it was a note. Someone, someone thought that they were smarter and they didn't even know. That's what it is. Um, Okay, here's a biggie. What was your reaction to getting nominated for the Oscar, which you, I'm sorry, so deserve. So deserve. So deserve. Thank you, that is so nice. You guys are nice. Um, I can't believe, I, like, there's nothing like false modesty or thinking that you might like seem, I, I did not think for a second. Like I just, I've never, I, um, I didn't set my alarm. Like I, I, uh, I, I just didn't think I had it. And we've been talking about this movie for so long and um, I, I'm so, I'm so proud of the work. My, my, mine included, but like the reason I was able to like have such a great experience on this movie was because I was just set up for success in a way that was like, it was like master class virtuosic filmmaking. I just literally was like, how I, anyway, so I feel like I, I didn't think that was gonna happen. And that's not like, look, it's not like this like crazy ultimate validation. It's just, I am so proud of them that I was like, yes, I was like, <laughs> I, I was literally able to like call him up and be like, what do you think, man? You did it. Like I wanted him to obviously like be recognized, but he is because this also just taken away from this movie. I just never really like imagine myself in this realm. Like I, I don't know. I'm not like dying. I just do like kind of sideways stuff. And um, yeah, I just, it's so crazy and so cool. I can't fucking believe it. <laughs> yeah. We can. <laughs> but it's, it's also a lot of pressure. It's like a whole nother game. It's not. No? No, are you kidding me? It's amazing. Like, okay, okay, it's, good. I'm I've, done. I'm like, you're literally. You're having a great time. Yeah, it's, it, the, the whole mood of this stuff changes like before all these, like, I even see all of my, like, you know, everyone else that's in the running like because we're competing against each other, which is so weird. <laughs> like, I wonder who's gonna do a better interview on the Hollywood Reporter to do the thing. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> do, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't matter to you, does it? No, that's what I'm saying. And You're so, not buying into that. Because there are people who... who... No, but the, it, everyone's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like an undeniable thing. It's a, it's a, it's a little race. We're all in a little race. And um, I just never saw myself in the race, and, and I, I so, so, so love and respect the other people I'm racing. <laughs> like, I think, <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it. I, I, have, I have studied them, I have revered them my whole life. I mean, like, really every single one of them. And, uh, yeah, it's very cool. I think what I was going to say, though, is, like, just to not, just to, just to sort of put a button on that weird comment about the race. Um, uh, everyone chills out as soon as like these things are announced. I've never had this experience before, but like we were peddling this thing and peddling this thing and like, you know, everyone was very hopeful. And then now everyone's like, we. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, now like it's we're cake. Like, yeah, exactly. Now we're like, ooh, the ride started. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. I'm, there's one, we're, I'm gonna ask one last question and then I think we're supposed to pull out at 9.30, so it's 9.29. My, uh, I, I just was curious about the Anne Boleyn and the use of Anne Boleyn and the way she is a ghost and a spirit and where did that come from? 
Uh... Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Are you okay? <laughs> he goes, Jesus Christ. Have you, <laughs> have you had too many royals? I just, I've, <laughs> I no, know. I, oh man. Um, I wonder where that came from. Like, uh, emotionally speaking, because that could have been like, oh God, I can't wait to hear, or it was like, shut up. <laughs> um, I couldn't read that one. Um, Luckily. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps for the good. Uh, okay, so Anne Boleyn reminds us that we are cogs in a machine that has been running the same way for centuries and the machine needs to be redesigned. And I also think, yeah. See, excellent. Yeah. See, it was quick. It was quick. I'm not going to like bore you to fucking tears and you like leave. Um, but also, um, I think she's like making up friends. I think she's, I, even Maggie, there's a sort of figment element to her uh, presence in the movie. It feels like kind of angelic and um, potentially not real. I mean, there are a couple moments where it, you know, she's not actually there. And um, yeah, I think. The cool thing, the Anne Boleyn thing also can be that she sort of is, she's so isolated and she's so friendless uh, that she's kind of making them up and talking to herself, but kind of, you know, in, in, a, in a more poetic and sort of like fantastical way. In a more subconscious, unconscious way. Yeah. Well, thank you so, 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 so very much. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really, 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 really appreciate it.